got a good attitude and you, you just get up. It's easy to worship the Lord, ain't it? It is. Praise the Lord. I tell you what, folks like Sister Betty just make you just not envious, don't they? Look at her. She got a little bit of sun and she looks like a little Indian. Hey, how about that? You see, I don't know what happened to us folks, us white folks, my, my side of the family. We get in the sun and we just get burnt, slap up. Look at her. She looks like a little Indian. Stand to your feet tonight. I figured I'd give you something to smile about tonight. Put a little smile on your face. Praise God. We, we uh, on my side of the family, we get out there in the sun and we just get burnt up and we peel and we, and we turn white again. But I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord. We're going to worship God here tonight. And as we get ready to get started, there's a lot of things to be praying about, folks. In all seriousness, we got people that are sick tonight. We got folks that are bound, those that are just deceived, those that are lukewarm. And I tell you, it's a mess out there. But I know as the church will intervene, we can see great things accomplished. Uh, tonight, I do want you to continually remember Sister Tammy and her kids, remember her children, Christina, and remember Vicki. I do want to have special prayers for Vicki tonight, that God will just touch her eyes, her heart, her spirit, and uh, just the Lord minister to her. And I also want to remember tonight uh, Sister Smith's father. Uh, those of you that may not realize it, he's, uh, we've made mention, but I'm going to remind you again, he's had some complications and different things going on. And we're going to be desiring the prayers tonight. How many will help me pray this week? How many of you pray when you're not in church? Amen. So don't lie now. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, you pray outside of church, and you should. I want you to join with me this week in prayer for her daddy. The Lord has touched him in the past, brought him a long ways. He's been through so much along with so many other people. I do want to remember Sister Charlotte tonight. Don't see her. Uh, she's had complications, and God's brought her a long way as well. We got folks that are not able to be with us anymore that used to be among us quite often, like Sharon. We want to pray for Sharon. I want to remember tonight the Brewer family. They've had some different things going on within their family. And uh, we just pray that the Lord will stretch his hand into that family and minister to the needs. God knows all about it. Uh, in due time, I'm sure, if you don't already know, they'll let you know what's going on. Nothing as far as they are concerned that uh, would worry you. But God knows all about it. He can fix, he can mend and heal. I want to keep on praying. Hello, Jesus. I want to keep on praying for Sister Tracy's uh, family. And uh, praying the Lord will open up the door for them to have a house for them their own that they can live in, where they can be in their own place. Uh, there's nothing like having your own place to live, even if you're renting. It's yours. You ain't got to worry about nothing. You can get up in the middle of the night, walk through the house, and not have to worry about who's staring at you, who's what not. You understand? If you've been there, you know what it's like. And I've been there, and it's rough, and I want to pray for them. My heart goes out to you, I know, but do keep them in prayer. And pray that Jeremy will get saved, sanctified, fire baptized in the Holy Ghost, set free, back on his feet spiritually. And I also want to remember the Gaskin family. They've desired your prayers, Sister Cindy, Nathan, uh, Bert, all of them. Let's pray that God will minister to their needs. I haven't talked to the Phillips family. I've reached out to them a couple times. And hadn't heard from them in a while. They used to sit on the back row, come ever so often. I don't know what's going on with them. Had different people ask me. I don't know either. But we will pray for them tonight and ask the Lord to minister to them. Is there any other needs tonight you're aware of? Is there somebody that needs prayer tonight, that needs the Lord to touch them? I want you to pray for my wife right along. We've been praying for her for the longest time with headaches, and she's really had some difficulties with that lately. It's been really bad here lately. On one side of her head has been really bothering her. I want to pray the Lord to touch her. I've prayed for her three or four times today myself, and I believe in the uh, the prayers of the saints. Remember that. Anything else? All right. All right. Stop.
Yes, sir. I remember what it was I was going to say. I uh, mentioned this the other night. How many's ever heard the Greek Pentecostal expression? You remember Wendy that came and preached for us? Well, Shannon used to be with her quite a bit. I think it's her niece. Anyway, she's still having problems, isn't she? But she's coming along. I got a message from uh, Wendy, uh, Wanda, Wanda. And uh, Wanda texted me and told me that uh, they'd have the church continue to pray, uh, that she was able to sit up on a pillow. And I, I don't remember all the details of it, uh, but there's still uh, ways to go. But they're believing the Lord for a miracle. And I want the church to join with them and believe them with them for a miracle as well. And we don't have to receive credit for any prayer we ever lift up before the Lord. Because it's not about that. What it's about is, is the church standing in the gap, making up the heads. You want somebody on the other side of Florida praying for you. If you were laying in the bed, he'd have the cancer as well. So do remember her. Her name is Shannon. Just a young girl. I don't know in her 30s. We've, we've said maybe mid-30s or so. It's all the young to have that type of cancer and whatnot. Sister Betty, you had a prayer request? Yeah, we just prayed for you and my brother. All right. Let's do remember that. And I want to pray for the church. I really do. Um, you know, we've, we've kind of tapered down. We've run about 39, 40 people seem like on Sunday. And, and I'm not a numbers kind of a preacher, but I'd still, I'd like the more people you see sitting in the pews, the more opportunities you have to minister to people. And uh, I know the love of many has waxed cold. And no matter how you preach it, no matter how good you can do it, people are going to do what they want to do. I've learned that. But I want to pray that God will just send a revival into the church. We really need a revival among God's people. We've had great services and God's moved, but still people are not moving toward the Lord. They're just kind of standing at a distance like they did in Moses' day whenever God moved on the face of the mountain. And uh, we need to get close to the Lord. So do you remember our church as a whole. And uh, also want you to remember my brother and Christina tonight. Remember them in your prayers, if you will. Anything else before we pray uh, here tonight? All right? After service, we're going to be having a uh, crock pot uh, cook-off type thing going on. We ask you to participate in that. Sister Smith's been through a lot. She's been gone. She just got back. She's put a lot of effort in trying to do a thing for past appreciation. We've tried to talk her into not doing it. And she wouldn't have none of that. And uh, so it's been a lot, and I know it's still a lot. Last time, I think it was last week, so we were supposed to, whenever the last time we did something, we were supposed to have folks bring stuff. My wife was the only one that brought something for the dessert type thing. And that's kind of weird whenever you're supposed to be doing it for past appreciation. So, uh, so please jump in and participate. Let these ladies know that you appreciate what they're doing and nothing else by participating, okay? All right. If you will, bow your heads tonight. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Ask Him for His help. Father, we love you tonight. We thank you for this great, grand opportunity to come before the royal presence of an almighty God. We ask you tonight, God, that you'll stir and move and bless the hearts of your people. We pray, God, for our lost loved ones tonight, those that are backslid, those that have become lukewarm. God, we pray that you will bring them out of that place of apostasy. And I pray tonight, God, that you'll revive your church, your people. Light a fire, the power of the Holy Ghost within us, Lord, that burns brighter than it's ever burned before. God, turn us into the evangelists that we should be. God, help us to see the harvest and how white that it is and ready to be reaped. And we pray, God, that the anointing of the Holy Ghost will be precious upon us to become real, God, like never before. Lord, that our gifts and talents will not be kept and left to the wayside, but God, that they be used for the ministry, the purpose, and the calling of Christ. We pray, God, for every sick person, those that are laying sick tonight, God, with diseases, cancers, and other things. We pray, God, for divine healing. We've got many among us tonight, God, of our family that are not here. But I pray, God, for their soul, for those, Lord, that have just drifted and have become lukewarm, God, because of whatever circumstance. God, draw them back to the house of God, to a place of prayer. God, revive their soul. We pray, God, as a church that you'll use us, Lord, to reach out, that we'll see this ministry of reconciliation, God, done among us, the people. And we'll praise you, God, for these great things, Lord, that you'll give houses to those without houses. 
God, that you'll fix finances of those, God, with their finances in a mess. We pray, God, tonight for those in an emotional uh, turmoil, God, that you'll strengthen, God, give them peace of mind. And, Lord, those that are discouraged and despondent, Lord, we pray for joy unspeakable and full of glory. And we'll praise you, God, for the great things you do, anoint the singing tonight, the preaching of the Word of God, everything that it may bring glory and honor to the name of Jesus Christ. And we'll give you praise. And everybody can shout amen. 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 If you want to join us in the choir tonight, come on, get around here. Sister Tracy and I, we've already agreed we're going to wing it tonight. So come on and help us wing it. Sister Rebecca and Sister Smith back with us. Hey, hey, hey. Give Sister Sarah here a hand too. Hey, anybody, hey. Anybody, 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 anybody can smile that big. Got to be a good person, right? <laughs> let's, let's just worship the Lord tonight. What page are we waiting?
he's done. You know what I feel like doing tonight? Oh, oh Lord Jesus. It's crazy. You got that crazy. I just, I believe, I really do believe that there's enough people sitting here tonight that have had some great, great things happen in your past. Am I right? Amen. And you're saying, well, look what the Lord has done. Is anybody going through anything real difficult right now or somebody you know? Let me see that. Maybe you know somebody going through something real difficult. <laughs> well, do you know one of the greatest things that was uh, of the early church? was the way that they sang with so much in it, you know, fervent and desire and anticipation of God moving, great preaching of the Word of God, the anointing on everything they were doing. But you know one of the things that was powerful about the early church was the, the times of testimony. And you know what I feel in my heart right now? We're singing that song about looking what the Lord's done. I want you to take just a few seconds. There's some of you, there's something big. I'm not talking about this long, drawn-out stuff about you found a refrigerator and it takes 25 minutes to tell somebody how good God was. You understand what I'm saying? But I'm talking about somebody that God has done something great, mighty, and you'll never forget it. I've heard some of you testify of some of the great things that God has done. You know, when I look back and I think, and I told you this in preaching before, if you ever listen to David, David was a very interesting individual, the book of Psalms. And you understand David is talking all sad and pitiful. I'm just going to add lib here this morning, just so that tonight is what it sounded like to me. You know, my ribs are sticking together, my backbone's touching my sternum and all this, and I'm about to die, and my flesh is curling up, going to fall off of me, and my toenails are rotting off. I mean, it sounded like David was about to fall apart. And then somewhere in the midst of his talking, all of a sudden you start seeing David start talking different. And you know what David did? The Bible said in one place whenever, the, uh, whenever he was over in Ziklag and the Malachites came over there and they burnt Ziklag to the ground. And David come and all of David's men and everything, you know, when they walked into Ziklag and see it was a mess. Everybody wanted to kill David because he was the leader and it was his fault they were in Ziklag in the first place on the Philistine side and they shouldn't have been there. And so whenever David comes over there, everybody wants to kill him. He's lost his wife, his children, his possessions, everything are burned to the ground. His wives are gone. They've done stolen everything that he had and burned the rest of it to the ground. So here David is, and the Bible said that he went until he had no more power to weep. When you cried until you don't even know how to more, you don't even have any more strength to cry. You ever been there before? I mean, you cry and tears don't even come out no more. That's, that's pretty bad. But David cried like that. I told y'all that to tell you this. He got to a point where that his tears, he just couldn't even cry uh, normal anymore because he had just lost all strength to weep and wail. And then it, he came to himself. And you know what he did? The Bible said he encouraged himself. I know how David did it. I've studied David. I've watched David through the Bible. You read Genesis to Revelation. You read everything you see about David. You'll find out how David encouraged himself. I specifically did that one time to understand him better. And what I found about David, you read the book of Psalms especially, you'll see what begins to happen is David starts encouraging himself by bragging on the Lord. That's exactly how he did it. You, you read the book of Psalms and you'll understand when David was in a valley, when he looked around about, he started, what? Oh, God, how come my enemy, they got a big house and I'm living in a cardboard box, you know, that kind of stuff. You know, and then the next thing you know, David starts encouraging himself. And the way he does it, he'll start saying things like, And the Lord defeated the Amalekites, and God destroyed the Philistine, and the Lord brought a great victory. And before the song is over with, it sounds like a totally different David. You know, I've seen church folks do that before. And I want to give you that opportunity tonight because we sing and look what the Lord has done. Some of you need to take just a moment. There's a reason why the Lord put this on my heart. Because some of you need to be reminded that God's done some great, 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 great things in the past. I'll be the first to tell you, there's some things that God has done that are great personal to me that uh, no human record could even explain the way that God did it. Amen. I remember one time, I was down in my back. 
I've been out of my back for seven months. I put on about 25 pounds. I looked like a big pudgy, you know, I looked pathetic and I was uh, laying in the bed, couldn't get out of bed. And, and uh, just one time I tried, I thought I was going to get out of bed. I went out and I was going to do something with our vehicles, run a rough. And I thought, well, I'll, I'll get down by the wheel well and I'll change the spark plugs I can reach. You know, I got down by the wheel well and it felt like I got shot in the back by 22. I fell on the ground. I had to crawl from outside in the house, up the stairs. It was a mess. And my wife probably remembers that. But we were in a church service one night. Right after that, I couldn't even hardly move. It was everything to get in and out of the, the van that we had. It was set up kind of high. And I remember one particular service. We were in Center Hill, Florida, the church that we rented over there. And I mean to tell you, the power of God fell that night and uh, just began to minister. And you know the reason why? It's because people was worshiping. People was glorifying God. And the power of God fell. You know what happened? All of a sudden, it hit me. And Brother Troy, I took off running around the church, and I ran. i never forget this. And I told you, I'm not much of a runner. But I ran. I jumped clean over the uh, remembrance table and ran up the back to the pews and right back down the pew, ran back down. We had an altar in that church that was about 12 foot long. If you try to pick it up, it probably weighed about 200 pounds, solid wood. I don't know what in the world got into me, but I mean, I felt the power of God on me so strong. I ran up to the front of that church. I grabbed that altar and put it up in the air, and I took off running with that altar. Amen. That's how God touched me and healed me. You know what happened? Just a few days later, I went to the doctor, and uh, the doctor said that they don't know what in the world happened, but there ain't nothing there. So, you know, like I said in the past, all I can say is it's unexplainable but undeniable. God has been for me in the past. How about you? Somebody else here tonight, I want you to testify. We're going to still have church, but I just feel like telling what God's done. Because some people need to be reminded that even though we're living in an evil, wicked world, God's not dead. Come on, somebody. God is not dead. He's still the same God that he's ever been. Society and the world may be getting worse. And problems and things may be piling up, but God's still real. You know, I mean, somebody tonight said God did something big. Tell it, Brother Clary. that she was having several times. And that same issue that she was having, and I 
I got to looking over and I thought about Sister Nora, how, you know, she didn't think she was going to be able to make it when the kidney passed. She told me she wasn't going to make it. I said, yes, you are. Encourage yourself in the Lord. You're going to make it. I looked across and I got to see him, you know, how we've been through things with, with Brother Steve and Sister Reba and, and Brother Sister Benefield. And as it went on around, I got to thinking about my own family. As we were saying, look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me just in time. And I got to thinking about it. I was telling him when I was in bed, I said, I, you know, he was half asleep. And I was getting stuff together there at the house and, and frustrated because I've been working and everything ain't just what I, what I wanted to be. And, and, and immediately, just as I started to get frustrated about all that, the Lord spoke to me. He said, but look where I brought you from. And I thought about what I, it was like, you know, you could see I was walking down the, the sidewalk there at Tiberius High School. And, and I could see Brother Myers across, you know, there. We was not saved. We did not, absolutely did not look like we do right now. And I got to thinking about how the Lord knew just then and how he just stuck those puzzle pieces together. And he said, one day you're going to preach. And one day you're going to be a pastor's wife. And he just stuck it together. I would have never thought, ever, ever, ever thought that it was going to happen. And I got to thinking about how the Lord has brought us through so many things. And I was studying the other night because I've got that thing to teach um, in, a, in a couple weeks. And the Lord brought that scripture back to my mind. I want to read it to you in Psalms chapter 40. It says, I waited patiently for the Lord. And he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up and also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon the rock and established my going. He put a new song in my mouth. This is what I want to say. He put a new song in my mouth and praise upon my lips. So he was in that pit and everything looked dark and dreary. And when I read this the other night, I thought about that dot that Sister Smith gave us forever ago. I don't even know how long ago. And that piece of paper with that dot. And how many times I've stared at that dot and that dot of that darkness covered everything. But immediately he brought me also up and out of that mighty pit. And he didn't say he walked on and did nothing. He said he put a new song in my mouth and praise upon my lips. Because when the Lord brings us out of all those depression times that I've said in for so long, and he brings you also an out. I told my mother the other day, I said, how come we just don't understand things? Because I was in that pit. But he brought me up and out. Not every day did we walk in that, but I'm so thankful that he has done so much for me. Look what the Lord has done. Amen. If y'all had a camera in our home every day, you'd say, how in the world, and I'm sure about the Smiths also, how in the world do y'all get through it? Because it seems like every time you turn, something's just going to happen. But the Lord brings us out immediately. I mean, one minute, you know, something just seems like it's driving us insane. But it's a whole outlook upon what we do. When I say, Lord, you know what? If everything falls off the counter and busts in the floor, and I've got creamer all the way up my leg, and the baby's crying, who cares? Thank you, Lord, that it didn't cut the foot, and that she wasn't crying because she was sick of a disease or something else. Because he brings us up and yeah. out. He don't leave us in that place. But he puts a new song. And I'm thankful for what he's done for me because I ain't always been up and out. Yeah. I ain't always been where I am now. Amen. I ain't always gotten through what I've gotten through now. You know, just this week, my family was all doing their thing. My sister's been down all week. I talked to him one time. And immediately the devil tried to torment my mind. But immediately it turned around and I said, you know what? He's given me people that took the place of those things because they don't understand what I have. They don't understand the joy that I have and that I don't, I, it's not a pleasure to deal with the things that they're going through that they want me to be part of because it's like mixing uh, oil and water. We just don't mix sometimes. And I said, but you know what, Lord? Thank you that you gave me something else to touch that what I needed. Thank you that you filled that void because the Lord has done great things. A lot of things that me and Brother Myers and Smith, we don't tell everybody. Because, you know, if I called and said, I'm going through this, or I'm going through that, the church would be like, oh, my God, Sister Myers is going through something. Let's just, you know, everything's just terrible. 
but he brings us up and out and he yes. sets us free of things. And I'm so thankful. I am so thankful to the Lord tonight. Amen. If somebody else, God's done something really big that you want to tell it tonight, go ahead. Don't sit on the Lord. If you got the Holy Ghost inside of you, you know what the Bible said? So he would testify of Jesus. Amen. Somebody won't tell what God's done. Something great.
standing firm by everything that I learned from every one of those part times. It's going to be four years this year, this week, that Kenny passed on. I'm sorry that he's gone, but the Lord did something for me. I'm not saying that the Lord took him away from me to, to give me a better life. He gave me a better outlook on life. And if I wasn't, didn't have the encouragement from you, your wife, this church, my friends, my family, my, this is my family right here. What's sitting on these pews is my family. And I, I fight every day to keep that respect from y'all. And I'm going to earn it. I'm going to earn it any way I can. And I'm not turning back. I'm not going back to this this is what I believe. This is what I want to give. This is what I want my children to see. Yeah. This is what I want my grandchildren to see. Because after we're gone, the elders here in the church, who's going to take over? Who's going to take over? If, we don't, if, if, if I don't show them this, what I'm feeling, what I've learned, who's going to teach them? Who's going to teach them? So, I'm standing on what I believe, and I'm glad for every life blessing I've earned. Amen. Amen. I'll tell you, one of the greatest testimonies is God's keeping power, keeping you through all the trials and storms and whatnot. Somebody else tonight, I want to know what thing God has done for you. That's great. You remember something maybe the Lord has done and brought you through. Back in 1980, my senior year at high school, uh, we didn't have to take the house on. We didn't have to walk away. I was on the bicycle. Now I'm at home. I was behind me. I had in my car. I was on the bicycle. But the thing you want to do is, if I'd been two seconds earlier, that car would roll on the top of me. I'd been dead. But the Lord threw me away, and the, the bike and fell on my ankle. The bike my ankle, but he saved me. Two seconds earlier, I'd been dead. It would have been made by a Ford and LTD. And if I had been two days earlier, I would have got killed. Yeah. And then in 1983, I'm on my other ankle. I was in the mall on the motorcycle and the car and stuff. And then I hit the wall, I hit on, I sit in the door to hide that. I sit in the wall on my other ankle. Three years later, and God took me from that. And then God said, Well, you hit that sidewalk, you can win it straight in the air. And then the wall, I hit first. And God didn't sit that way. He flew me to the wall. And that foot on that side. He wrote down, he went, that's another thing that God made me wrong. So if you want to bring him home here, you know, I'll bring the God for it. Amen. Somebody else, the Lord has done something you can remember. I don't care if I've heard it before. I just want to hear somebody brag on the Lord tonight. Let everybody know God's still on the throne. Yes. Maybe something he's done recently. I thank the Lord that uh, I remember, I was just thinking the day that she was born, I was, they said that Jeff was in the hospital having a baby and she was really having a hard, hard time. And I was too sick to go down there to see about her or anything else. And Greg was, he had a bad toothache. And I said, well, but you know, I thank the Lord that I mean, the boy, you know, now, I mean, you know, sometimes she's just like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Amen. Cancer would have took you out. You wouldn't be sitting there tonight enjoying that grandbaby. That's something to be praising the Lord about, isn't it? Thank God for the prayers. Thank God for the answers. Somebody else. But Steve? Yeah, I thank the Lord for that. Uh, April night, he was there. I know I lived out in the world and I was raised in church, but I lived out in the world for many, many years. Uh, I was a mean, nasty, drinking, did all kinds of other sinful things. And I thank God for that night that I looked up and I asked the Lord, I says, I need your help. And he was right there, right there on time. And I know you heard this before, but I, and I, I got up the next morning and I went to my living room just like I did every other morning and I raised that shade. I had one in full shade where you pull it and it screams up and the sun just shone in so brightly and beautiful and I was like bent down and I said my God what a beautiful day yeah. and I was like whoa who said that <laughs> I was like, it was not something that I would normally say but I just thank God for that faithful night for being there for loving me for waiting for me all them years to come back you know basically just come back running to him and he was waiting there for me with his arms open to receive me I just thank him for that Amen. Amen. somebody else I want to hear a 
this a moment tonight. There's enough people here tonight. We could go on and on and on, but I want to hear something good that God's done in your life. We ought to all be able to all praise the Lord for something. What is this, Tracy? Praise the Lord. That's awesome, isn't it? Amen. Amen. What a testimony. Many of us tonight have the same or similar testimony of going through trials, fighting the devil on every hand, and you just keep on pulling yourself up by your bootstraps and pressing on. Somebody else testified tonight. God's been good to you, and you might as well. God's been good enough to bless you. You ought to be good enough to tell it. Maybe God's done a miracle. One of the greatest things maybe God's ever done in your life, and you just want to tell it tonight. Anybody? Go ahead, Sister Lynn.
family and, you know, um, uh, material things doesn't mean anything. You know, I've got a nice home, I've got a nice car, and I, I thank God for it. Sure. Because it all comes from Him. It's not mine. Right. It, it all comes from Him. But if I lost it tomorrow, I'm hoping that I would still praise God and thank yeah. Him. Amen. Somebody, God's turned something around for you. You just want to praise Him. So, Myers, I thank the Lord for each and everything He's done for me. <coughs> Mainly, many, many years ago, when I haven't always been a saved person, uh, my family, my mom and dad didn't take us to church. Us kids got up and went to church and went to Sunday school on the bus. And uh, I always said when I got married that I would take my kids to church, I wouldn't make them go by themselves. But I thank God for back when I was out in the world. I was a drinker, and uh, the night I got saved, I left 10 drinks sitting on the table when we walked out, and the next day, my next night, we were supposed to go back to another party there at the Moose Lodge, and I told my husband, I said, I'm not going. I said, I don't want to go there, so I didn't go. I stayed home, but I thank God it wasn't long after that. It was on Easter. I went to church with my sister, the one that's gone now. I went to church with her, and I got saved. And after that, I never went back into anywhere to drink or anything anymore. And I thank the Lord for saving me like he did. Amen. Somebody else is going to give the Lord praise. Anybody give an opportunity to just brag on the Lord to Brother Benfield. Brother, when you get mine and Brother Claire's age, you have a lot of memories. A lot of things that God has brought you through, kept you. Should have been dead a long time ago, but God saw fit to raise us up. Go back and I became, you know, all these things that come to my mind sitting here. From my childhood, from before I could even remember in life, the doctors gave up on me. My mother told the Lord that she wanted to go ahead and take me. And then, then my brother told me to, but then he started, you got well. God brought me through that. I would have never remembered yet, but those things, and then I get to thinking about all the times as a teenager. God brought me through so many things that I could have been killed. In the Navy, and, and, and it was supposed to be in peacetime in the mid-50s. We were just secured from General Porter's battle station, those drills. And just come up top, like if my battle station was down below, so we just come up and get the pressure out on the battleship. And there was something coming across the border, somebody was about to get shark or something like that. And they got close to those the torpedo. Who shot that thing? I still don't know. They never told us. But that thing, if it would have hit, I figured it about burnt the thing because it was down there underneath the barrel. When it come in, you couldn't see it no more. And I was leaning over real hard to look. And everything that you know, just went on fire. And I know that if it had hit, I'd have been everybody was right below me. I thank God he brought us through that. I remember so many times I think that a truck driver wrote out. When I was in a team, running a team operation, that me and my co-driver was up in Kentucky, and it was on a Sunday night. And that day I'd been hit by a big hornet up here, and that thing got bad, and it left the big old long stinger. I got my arm started getting red and swelling, and then it started covering my whole body. I couldn't even shift get it hurt so bad. So I had to use the drive again. We got up there the next time I woke up was when I was getting woke up and the truck was bouncing me around inside like a basketball. It ran off the bridge. It throwed me off. I didn't know if it was pitching how the mountains are at night at pitch black. And I'm hanging on something and I noticed that I realized after I come to it, my legs were hanging off the bridge and the rest of me was up on top of the bridge. You have to move real careful and very slow. Even that God give me that wisdom to understand that, not to make any sudden move. I got back up, finally crawled back up on the bridge and didn't know what to do because I figured if she started walking, he might walk off the bridge. And now I heard a truck coming down the mountain. And you know, he's winding out, coming down, and it was pitch black. And I know that if he got there, if something happened, he would not see me in time before he run over me. I knew that. But God made that truck, and diesel don't catch on fire. It has to have something to ignite it. That diesel truck caught on fire even though it was down there in the canal. It caught on fire and he saw the fire before he got to the bridge. I know that was God that made that truck catch on fire. And all that, so many more times, right. that those things like that that's going on, 
It just, and I know it, it just been so many things, and so many things even after that, in health and sickness. Y'all know I had the heart stuff last year, Don. But before, for years before that, they keep putting me in the hospital, run all kinds of tests, causing severe chest pains and pressure and everything else. I know that when that happened, when they finally did that stent and everything and found out how the blockage was, I knew that was God that kept me for another reason. And all those things, and there's so many, many other things that I can say, but I won't do it. But I know one thing, God has kept me. And all these years, unworthy as I am, God still keeps his hand up on me. All right. And I'm looking forward to being with him pretty soon. But I know yeah. God, when he gets ready to call me home, I'm here. I may be sick and tired, but I know that he is keeping his hand up on me. Amen. He's watching over me. He's watching over every one of us. He will never, never leave his sight. And I know this. His word tells us he keeps his eyes and on the spares like the sparrows. And he's watching us every time. He's watching us always. And he's got his hand up on our lives. And he'll bring us through. If we be faithful, he'll bring us through. And when we fail him, like she said, I used to drink heavy myself in the Navy and everything else. And even after that for a few years. And God brought me out of that, delivered me from all of that stuff. Not that I was worthy of it, but he brought me through. He brought me out of the cigarettes. He got me there when he stopped. He delivered me. I stopped immediately. I never wanted to run. I can't stand to be around it. I can't be around the smell of it. And I thank God for that. I used to love to fish dearly. But God delivered me. I was one Sunday morning down there. Uh, uh, I was down at Causeway. It was about time for church to start. Me and my former brother-in-law, which he's passed on now, and my son and Jimmy Horn. We've down there. We've been down there since Saturday fishing along the coast down there. And, and by that time, the church is starting my heart to squeeze because I wasn't there. When you love the Lord, you want to be in this house where brothers and sisters of life pay for that. Yeah, you right. miss it when you're not there. Yeah. Many years I've come the road and I've been hurting over about something not about time for the church to start. It's just I feel so grieved and part. I wanted to be there. But God always kept me and blessed me. But I made God a promise right then and there, Lord. I said, it'll never get in my way again. And as much as I love fishing, God delivered me then from it. Not that it's wrong, but it was wrong for me to be out of church, and I missed it. Because I missed it. One time I had to go to church because somebody said you should be. I wanted to go to church. I rejoiced in the fellowship of the brothers and sisters of that place. And this is what it's all about. We're to love each other, and we're to rejoice, and we're to come together. We're to draw strength one from the other. That God gets blessed. Why can we down and up and lift them up? Because they're up. And that's the thing about the brothers and sisters in the Lord. We are to help each other. And we'll do it. If we'll do this, we'll see things happen in the Lord. We'll see things given up. We see miracles after miracles. We see people giving a heart, surrendering to the Lord of everything. And we just say it. We'll sell out to Him. And every day of our mind totally sell out to the Lord. This is where the whole problem is. When He talks about our heart, He talks about this thing up in here. Our heart is just this thing here to pump. This is what does the thing. And this is where the battlefield is, right here inside of this yeah. mind. That's yeah. the battlefield. If you win the battle here, you got it made. Come on. But it's right here at the battle. And yeah. I just pray that we'll all help each other and we'll see each other going down, we'll lift them up. When once we get down, they'll lift us up. And I just thank God for the privilege to be with some brothers and sisters of the Lord. And so he says, Come on up hither. I'm going to still be worshiping the Lord. And I thank God for all the that it is. It's such a privilege. It's not a responsibility. It's a privilege for him to give his life for us. We hear it so much. I think sometimes people may get tired of hearing it. But when I think of where we could be if he had to die for us, All right. or where we would be, that's such a privilege to love the Lord and to serve him and to be his child. It is such a privilege and an honor to be called the son of the living God. We know that he come from his own. He was creator. He wasn't talking about it just sitting down here. He was creator. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. And I made all three in one. Yeah. I praise yeah. God. He was there from the very beginning. Jesus never said before him I was. He said before him I was, I am. He always said before I am. Always there. And I thank God he still is the great I am. We have that we have that privilege and opportunity to say, Lord, you're the great I am and I love you. I love you, I love you, I love you. I worship you, almighty God.
I just thank you, my Lord and my master. Let's give our heart and life to him. And let the people see we should never be ashamed of it. And we are who this city be ashamed of us. Amen. I want to share something with you tonight, and then I'm going to give Pastor Smith the opportunity. He's going to share something with you. My wife and I, we went through the most difficult time of our entire lives. And uh, how many has been through something in your life that's one of the worst things you've been through? I know every time the wind blows, people say, it's the worst thing I've been through. I'm, I'm talking the worst mess I've ever been through in my entire life. And I remember one day, I want to share this for what it's worth to give you a little bit of encouragement. I remember one day sitting around a table with about 10 to 12 people looking at me and my wife. They were saying all kinds of crazy things, making up all types of accusations and different things, kind of twisting stories and saying things. And I sat there until I had about all I could take of all the junk. Finally, Sister Myers at times has told me, that's not the Lord, honey. That's the spirit of Joe Myers. But this was the Lord, and it was a combination of the spirit of Joe Myers. I had all I could take. And a boldness rose up inside of me. I didn't know what they would do. I didn't know what they would say. And at that point, I didn't really care. I got so upset about the whole thing and so frustrated spiritually, didn't he? I sat up in my chair and almost leaning across the table. And I said, I want every single one of you to listen to me. Are you listening? And they didn't say a word. I said, okay. I said, I and my wife are blood-bought, sanctified, baptized in the Holy Ghost. I'm an anointed man of God. And the Bible said, touch not mine anointed, nor do my prophet no harm. I said, you've slandered me with your mouth. I said, you've come against me with all kinds of false accusations. And I said, as sure as I'm sitting in this chair today, I said, you see me? You're looking at me? I said, I want you to understand this. When all of this is over with, I don't care what you said. Because it's, well, you know, normally the way that this goes is better than all this stuff. I said, I don't care whatever that you got to say about this. I said, mark my word. When this is over with, you will have to apologize and eat your words. I said, because God's going to bring me out of this. I'll tell you, folks, I don't even know half when I was thinking to myself when it was over with. Did I just say that? I'm not kidding. And to, to tell you how the Lord moves, sometime later the enemy would throw different things at you, making you think, well, it's not getting any better. I had a lot of folks coming against me, people asking questions, going in a, a blah, 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 you know, all this gossip type junk. And it was the most difficult thing I've been through in my life. I'm telling you, I thought I was going to lose my mind. But I remember uh, one night right here in this church, we had a time of prayer. All the men in the church came together. We prayed. I remember laying right there in this floor. And the Holy Ghost gave out a message and said, you have moved in faith. And he said, now I'm about to move. Right after that, folks, is when God began to take things and flip-flop everything. There was one last obstacle. One last obstacle. And we were in revival. Brother Scott Smith was here preaching during that period of time. And uh, one night during that service, I don't remember how that it went about. I have to go back and get the video. I remember if we, Holy Ghost fell before the preaching or after or whatever. I just remember right about in here somewhere, the power of God was moving and touched me. And I'm not one of these people just fall out, you know, because of, oh, so-and-so blew on me. If the Holy Ghost ever touches me and I'm in the floor, you know it's got to be real. That's just, I'm not that kind of person. That night, I laid there on that floor, Sister Nora, and the power of God all over me. And it was one of the most um, amazing moments of my entire Christian faith. I laid there underneath the spout of God's glory, and it was so amazing. And while I was laying there, some of you have testified this too. While I was laying there, the Spirit of God was showing me something in a vision while I lay there in this floor. In that vision, what I saw was... You ever seen that movie Ghost and you see those things that come after them people like dark, dark figures? That's the only way they're described. Those like dark, uh, like uh, cloud-like figures. 
and they would fly down at me. There was all sorts, and they were flying. They were trying to get to me, Pastor Smith. And every time that they would come down, like they were going to swoop down like bees to get me. They could come so far, but they couldn't go but so far close to me. And then they would fly back up. And the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me while I was laying in the floor and said, they cannot go but so far. That night, I'm telling you, I was on a supernatural high. I'm telling you, I felt so much of the victory and the power of God. And I mean, I felt like I could just run through a troop and leap over a wall. Like one preacher said, leap over a wall and, and uh, run the leap over a troop and leap through a wall or something like that. You know, I felt good. That night I went home and I talked to my wife. And this is just a testimony of how God good, good God is. I want you to know this. That night I went home and I told my wife, I said, honey, I want you to know. I said, the Lord spoke to me tonight. She said, he did. What did he say? I said, well, the Lord spoke to me and said the enemy could only go so far. And I told her what I saw and how excited I was. She said, good, because i got to show you something. She showed me a letter and she said, you see this? Well, that letter wasn't good news. It looked like it might be some bad thing. And I said, well, she said, do you still feel like the Lord showed you something? God touched you? God showed you something? I said, yeah, absolutely. I said, no doubt in my mind. She said, well, then you know what? There's a reason why the Lord wouldn't let me show you that. She said, I already knew everything was going to be all right. She said, I waited for the right time. You know what God did? God turned every single thing around. You know the reason why? Because God is true to his word. I told my wife, I told her, I said, this, this is a fact. I said, if God brings us out of this mess, I said, if I had never seen a miracle in all of my life, I'll have seen one now. And guess what? I'm here to tell you that God is still a miracle worker. So if you have some discouragement, you're bound by affliction, addiction, or a problem, or something's going on in your life, you need to do what David did. You need to take a look back and start thinking about all the times that God moved on your behalf, the things that you might be able to testify of, maybe the private personal testimonies you can't tell of, and you need to remind yourself of how good God's been in the past, and you need to put, pick up your chin and say, God, you've done great things in the past. And tonight, I'm going to worship you in spite of my circumstance. I'm going to press on in spite of what's going on. A lot of times I go through junk today and I tell my wife, I said, you know what, if God brought me through that, and if God loved me enough and cared enough to keep me pastor and pressing on in faith and in love, how can I not keep pressing on? Folks, you need to get a hold of that. If the Lord has brought you through what you've been through, you need to be good enough to keep fighting the good fight of faith. Grab this bull by the horn and press on in the name of Jesus. How many agrees with that tonight? Give the Lord a hand clap of praise for all the great testimony. Pastor Smith feels like preaching or teaching or testifying or talking or whatever. I'm just going to allow him to share his heart. Give him a hand tonight. Let him know you appreciate it. sitting there chomping at the bit, so uh, I'm going to do my best to just uh, obey God tonight. I want you to just uh, hang in there with me just for a few minutes, and I uh, just want to share my heart best that I can. The Lord knows our hearts tonight, and uh, more than anything, I want to preach for you. I don't want to preach to you. I want to preach for you tonight, and uh, I just want the Lord just to allow us just to share our heart more than anything in this world. Uh, First Kings is where we're going to be taking our scripture from tonight, the book of First Kings. Chapter number 19. Amen. First Kings chapter number 19. Give you just a minute to find that. Praise his name tonight. Lord's good to us, I'm telling you. Enjoyed every testimony tonight. I want you to know that it encouraged my heart to hear different ones tell the different testimonies. It encouraged me to know that if the Lord helped you through it, that he's going to help me through things. And I just know that he's right on time tonight. Amen. 1 Kings chapter number 19, verse number 9. If you found it, say amen. amen. The Bible says that he came thither into a cave and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, and he said unto him, What doest thou here, Elijah? Right, right. And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I, only am left. And they seek my life to take it away. 
And he said, Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by in a great strong wind, rent the mountains, and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, still small voice. And it was so when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle, and he went out, and went out, and stood in the entering of the, of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, What doest thou here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, because the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left. And they seek my life to take it away. The Lord help me tonight. I want to preach on the lonely soldier tonight. The lonely soldier. Pray with me, if you will. Lord, we come before you tonight. We just ask you. Anointing, Lord, we can't do anything in ourselves, but we're just asking you that, Lord, that, that anointing that destroys the yoke of the enemy. I pray, God, that you'll just touch, Lord, these lips of clay as we speak and, per, and proclaim your word. I pray, God, that you'll, we know that your word will not go out and come back void. It will accomplish what you send it forth to accomplish. I pray, God, that you'll touch, Lord, in every heart and every life, God. I pray, God, that you'll move and meet the need, Lord, of this people tonight. Lord, help us, Lord, I pray. Oh, and everything we say and do, God, we give you praise, glory, and honor, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you for standing for the reading of the Word of God. Amen. The lonely soldier tonight, as I begin to read this scripture, as we begin to talk about Elijah, Elijah had been up on Mount Carmel, and uh, he had called the fire of God down, Brother uh, Benefield. He had been, been up there, and the 400 prophets of Baal and the 400 of the grove had come up against him, and you know what? He was standing up for God. He was standing up for what was right, and he was standing up for what was true, and uh, you know, these 400 prophets of Baal, I mean, they were mocking him, and they were coming against him, and, and doing all these things, the 400 prophets of Baal, the 450 prophets of Baal, 400 of the grove uh, was coming up against him because of who he, was, who he was and what he was standing for. Amen. But you know what? He got past that. God answered by fire. God answered and come by his way. He licked up the offering. He'd done all these different things. Uh, He's seen the power of God in a way maybe you and I have physically never saw these things. Uh, but he had come away from that place. Uh, and now we find him. He's down in a cave and he's lodged there and the Lord comes to him and is asking him a question and if you'll notice in the scriptures that I read tonight he read, he asked him this question twice he said what doest thou hear Elijah? Well Elijah both times he comes back and he answers God and, and he begins to tell him Lord uh, you know uh, I've been I, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts for the prophets for the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant. Uh, talking about other folks that have laid it down, uh, that have done things against God's word. Uh, they've thrown down thine altars, uh, and they've slain thy prophets with a sword. Uh, and here he is. Uh, here's where the rubber meets the road. Uh, he says, Lord, uh, he says, I, even I only am left. In other words, uh, I'm the only one that's trying to serve God. Uh, I'm the only one that's trying to go forth. Uh, I'm the only one that's trying to do right. I'm the only one that's trying to walk right and talk right and look right. I'm the only one that's left, Lord. And I'm down here in this cave because everybody is against me. Everybody's come against me. It's this one or that one or the other. I've had 400 of the prophets of Baal. I've had 450 of the grove or however which number it went. Amen. I've had all these that are against me, God. I know that you've answered. I know that. He knew that in his heart. But uh, yet and behold he's still down in a cave because he's hiding from Jezebel uh, he's down in a place uh, amen where he should not be uh, because he's seen the power the true power of God up there on Mount Carmel but see you know what folks we do I'm just going to share my heart with you amen we'll go through a note or two maybe uh, but I'm just going to tell you this sometimes uh, we go through things in this life and I heard testimonies tonight uh, how that God has moved for us uh, how that God has spared us uh, how God has watched 
watched over us. How God has provided a way when there seemeth to be no way. God moves in our lives. God helps us in situations. He does things for us. He sees our need. He sees where we're at. He sees what we're going through. And God answers for us. God moves in a way that we never dreamed God could move. But God comes through for us. And we're up on the mountain. Amen. We're up on Mount Carmel, if you will, of our lives. And we see God move. And we see God answer in a way that we never dreamed God could do. But he does that very thing. But it seems like just the very next day or so. Amen. We're up on the mountain. Amen. We're fighting a good fight of faith. We're doing as God called us to do. We're obeying God and we're doing these things. But all of a sudden, maybe just one thing comes our way and it just scares us to death. Huh? It gets us all worried. It gets us all discouraged. It gets us all down and out. It gets us in the mully grubs, if you will. It gets us to a place that we'll hide ourselves down in a cave. That we'll get off to ourselves. We'll get all alone and by ourselves and begin to call out, Oh, woe is me. We heard Pastor talk about David. Hell, and he'd get down. He'd get discouraged. He'd get upset. He'd be going through a trial. He'd be going through some troubles. Oh, but praise God. He began to lift himself up through those psalms and those songs under Zion. But we find Elijah here. He's down in a place. He's down in a cave that he's run to. He's down there by himself. And he's looking at his situation. Oh, my word. And the Lord speaks unto him. Amen. He speaks them to him. And he begins to give every excuse that's known the man, so to speak. Amen. He begins to give God excuses. Have we ever given God excuses? You don't have to raise your hand. I'll raise it for you. Amen. We've all given excuses. We've all, amen, done and said things unto God. Oh, well, this and that, the other. Woe is me. Even me, even I, and I only. I'm the only one walking right. I'm the only one trying to live right. Everybody else around me, amen, they're doing this, and they're doing that, and they're doing the other. But it's just me, Lord. Woe is me. Come on, church. Amen. Oh, but the Lord, amen, passed by. Oh, hallelujah. And it said that the great and strong wind, it went the mount, rent the mountains and break it in pieces. But the Lord wasn't in that wind. Come on. Amen. And then an earthquake, but the Lord wasn't in that. And then a fire, but the Lord was not in that. But he said after the fire, there was a still, small voice that began to speak unto him. Amen. To begin to speak unto Elijah. Amen. What are you doing here, Elijah? What are you doing down in this place? Oh, but he began to, he didn't realize again. He began to make the same excuses and begin to talk to God and tell God once again, Lord, it's just me. I'm the only one. I'm the only one striving. I'm the only one going forward. I'm the only one trying to do what's right but I'm down in this cave and I'm hiding like a little fraidy cat amen from some woman Jezebel that's put a bounty out on my head amen but God he just answered my fire he just answered his prayer when he prayed amen God answered my fire up on Mount Karma but now he's down in this cave now he's down in this place Amen, and he's hiding. Amen, he's hiding from the things of this world. Paul makes an account in Romans 11 and 1. He said, I say then, hath God cast away his people? Amen, he said, God forbid. He said, for I also am an Israelite. Now, let me tell you, just read a few scriptures here. Of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin, God hath not cast away his people, which he foreknew. What you not, what the scriptures say, say of Elias. In other words, don't you know what the scripture says about Elijah? Amen. He said, how? He maketh 
intercession to God against Israel saying, Lord, they've killed the prophets. Then dig down thine altars and I am left alone and they seek my life. This is Paul's account, if you will, the same scripture we just read. Oh, but here's what I want to read to you tonight. Romans 11 and 4. He said, but what saith the answer of God unto him? He said, I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. But even so then, at this present time, right now, where we're living at, right in the place where we're at, he said, also, there is a remnant according to the election of grace. I'm telling you what, church, amen, Paul's telling us here, said, listen, God had an answer for Elijah. God had an answer for Elijah. I'm the only one. I'm the only one fighting. I'm the only one struggling. I'm the only one going through anything. I'm down here. I'm hiding out in the cave. I'm all by myself. Oh, but my God, God answers him. He said, let me tell you, boy. He let me tell you. He said, I've got 7,000 that have not bowed their knee to Baal. You oh he told him he said listen I've got some others that are fighting that good fight of faith I've got some others that are going through some things I've got some others that are going through these things just like you are but they've not bowed down oh, to that image of Baal. They've not bowed down to the enemy. They've not allowed that enemy of their soul oh, to overtake them. God said that they, amen, had not bowed their knee unto Baal. Praise the Lord. Aren't you glad? Amen. I'm just going to tell you this. Amen. From my heart, Sister Rebecca sings that song. Amen. I just held on. Come on. Maybe she'll sing that for us here in just a little little bit. Oh, but I'm just going to tell you this. There's times that I look at my life and I wonder, God, how in the world, as the song says, how I'm still standing. Come on. God, how? I heard testimonies tonight of some struggles. I've heard some battles. I've heard some things that you've been through that I've not even heard myself before. Oh, and you wonder to yourself, God, how am I still standing? You know? Oh, God, how am I still standing? How am I still going on? How am I still going through the things that I'm going through? How am I ever going to make it through the storms of this life? We begin to question our own selves. That's where Elijah was. He was down in that place. That's where he was at. He was down in a place. Amen. He was questioning God. He was questioning everything he knew. He was questioning exactly how in the world am I going to make it. I'm the only one left. If I'm the only one left, I don't have the support. I don't have the backup. I don't have the help. I don't have this. I'm telling you what. It gets lonely at times. Amen. It gets lonely at times serving God. Right? It gets lonely at times. Amen. When we're standing up for what is right and what is true. There's family that will forsake us. Friends will forsake us. Loved ones and different people will forsake us because we want to stand for what is right and what is true. It's lonely sometimes. It's lonely. Amen. But you know what? That's that verse, uh, amen, in the scripture. It said there's no secret. It said I just held on. Woo! Glory to God. It's been on my heart uh, oh, for some time now. I just held on. Amen. I just held on. It ain't because I'm some spectacular, super duper whopper Christian. It ain't because of who my mama was or my daddy was. It's not because of who grandpa was. It don't matter about any of those things. It's who my daddy is. It's who my elder brother is. It's in him that I live. It's in him that I move. Woo! Glory to God. Amen. It ain't because who I am. It ain't because of what I've done. I don't claim, as that song says, I don't claim to be no hero. Huh? I'm not a hero. 
come on, there's times I've been through some things. Hey, Amen. I didn't testify tonight. I felt like I'd hold off until I got to preach if the Lord help us. Hey, Amen. But the Lord's brought me through some mighty tough times. God's helped me in situations I'd never seen a way out. But God made a way of escape. God made a way out for me. He made a way out for you. It's not in me. It's not in me and my abilities, no my, my thoughts or my prayers or any kind of good thing or whatever. I know he hears my prayers, but I know this. It's in him. It's all because of him. It ain't because of any good I've done. It ain't because of nothing that I've said. But it's all been because, amen, of what God has done. Amen. It ain't because of my strength. It's because of his. I began to think about I was never in the military. Hearing Brother Benefield talk tonight about being there and seeing that torpedo go by. I began to think about how I've heard of soldiers, and if I'm not mistaken, I'd heard a story now, I'm not sure all the details, of an uncle of mine who'd went into Vietnam, and he had been through some things. I'm telling you what, some un just un awful things. I don't even talk about some of the details, but he was there, and he was fighting for this country, and he was keeping the wars off of the shores here and taking it over there. But different things had happened, but I'd heard the story that maybe, just maybe, I don't know all the instances, that maybe he was the last man standing in his little outfit that had went out. I don't know all the details, but I've heard other stories the same way. Amen, the platoons or the different groups would go out and they'd fight the battles and there'd be maybe one that was just left when it was all said and done. Can you imagine that soldier, amen, when he finally puts up his head and he looks around and he sees this one that's died and he sees this one one that's died and he sees that one that's passed away because of the battles that they've been in Huh? Can you see that in your mind this night? Amen. Can you see that? That you're in the army. Amen. That you're a soldier. That you're fighting the good fight. Amen. And everybody around you is giving up. Everybody around you is quitting. Or they're being killed off by the enemy. Huh? I believe Elijah kind of felt that same way in a sense. I'm sure, amen, he, I believe he meant what he said from his heart. It's me, it's just me. He couldn't see what God could see. God could see things that Elijah couldn't see. There's times when we look around, oh my. Amen, we look around the church and we look around and we see empty pews. We see people that's not here, that should be here. Huh? But see, let me tell you this. There's nights that maybe we only have 15 or 16. Amen. We might only have just a few at times. But let me tell you this. What I've got in my heart. Amen. That 15 or 16 that maybe you have in your heart. Amen. I'm telling you, God, he's able to overcome any obstacle that comes my way. If God be for me, who can be against me? Amen. There's no weapon formed against me that shall prosper. Amen. That's a promise he made unto me. And he made unto you. Amen. But let me tell you this. You may see folks laying it aside. I've heard of preachers laying it down and quitting. I've heard of pastors stopping preaching and not going back to the pulpit anymore. I've heard of singers called of God laying it down, doing things that they ought not be doing. All kinds of garbage like that. Amen. They've been killed off or they've been hurt or they've been wounded in battle. And the enemy of their souls come in like a flood. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord wanted to raise up a standard against him. But they would not let it. Huh? We can do that. Do you know that? We can push God aside. We can do our own thing. We can. We have that free will. We have that ability. But that's a lonely soldier that don't have God in their life. God knows what he's doing. Amen. There's times. Amen. The Bible. Let me read this. Amen. There are times. Amen. That we feel that we're hanging on just by a thread. That we're just hanging on. By, oh, but the knot at the end of the rope. But 2 Timothy 2 and 3 says, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. He tells us here. He says, No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life uh, that he may please him uh, who hath chosen him to be a soldier. I want to stop there just for a moment and take my time. He said, no man that warreth 
entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. Amen. That he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. Let me tell you, church, there is a lot of things in this life amen that will try to get you tangled up in there's an enemy of your soul that desires to get you wrapped up tied up tangled up in every kind of thing amen that is known to man it don't matter what it is your weakness might not be mine my weakness might not be yours amen he'll use family he'll use friends he'll use church members he'll use every tactic that he can he's been a devil for longer than you and I've been alive together He'll do everything he can to trip you up. But every time that we begin to get tangled up in the affairs and the things of this world, amen, as we get entangled into those things, oh, my word, we tie the hands of God. Huh? God called us to be a good soldier. Huh? He tells us here, he said, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be boy stuff and girl stuff. Huh? It's men and women of God that has to stand and fight the good fight of faith. It is a battle that we face each and every day. But if we get ourselves entangled up with everything else going on other than what God would have us to do, we're not being the soldier that God has called us to do. He deserves the praise. He deserves the glory. Amen. I don't want to be a lonely soldier. But sometimes it may feel that way. There's times that we're going through battles and struggles and it seems like nobody else is around. That nobody else is there. Nobody else is there to lean on my word. Amen. It's a very lonely time. Oh, lonely thing at times being a soldier of Christ. Amen. I've had family. I've had friends. I've had loved ones and people that I care a lot about. At times I've had to distance myself. I had to do that. It ain't easy. It ain't easy. I heard sister talking tonight in her testimony about family and things. You know, it's not easy to make up those decisions and those choices to separate yourself in certain circumstances, certain situations, certain functions. You want to be there. My word, we're human, aren't we? We love our family. We love our friends. We love this and that and the other. These people that's in our lives, we love them. But when certain circumstances and situations arise, we can't be a part of those things. Why? Because we'll entangle ourselves in the affairs of this life. And to be a good soldier, we got to be careful, Pastor. We got to watch every move that we make. We got to watch every word that we say, everything that we do, everywhere that we go. We got to be careful. We got to be careful. If we're going to be a good soldier, sometimes it is a lonely thing. It is. Because we got to make certain decisions. This is, listen, I'm looking out for my soul. I'm looking out, not just for me, but for my soul. I'm looking out for what I'm doing for God. Because if God wants me to be a good soldier, I got to do it his way. Because there's something up ahead that God's calling me to do. And if I got tangled up in this, I won't be able to do what God has called me to do. Amen. Sometimes it appears that nobody else is standing on the principles and doctrines that God has set forth in his word. Nobody understands the predicament that we're in. Amen. Just like Elijah. You know, he, I'm, he's down in the mully groves. He's crying, if you will. It ain't nobody but me. It's only me, God. I'm the only one standing. Oh, but see, he couldn't see the big picture of things. God could see the 7,000 that had not bowed down their need to bail either. Sometimes it feels very lonely as a pastor. 
It does. I've heard pastor and pastors talk about different things over the last several years, things that he's going through, things that our church is going through, things that folks in the church is going through, things he's going through personally in his family, whatever. Amen. I hear some of the things he says, and then I talk to somebody on the phone, a dear preacher friend of mine back home or, or somewhere else, and guess what? They're going through some of the same exact things that he's going through. Imagine that. Another pastor going through something that the same pastor down in Florida is going through. Why? Why is that? Because soldiers for Christ are going to battle some of the same exact things that other soldiers for Christ are going to battle. Just like tonight, you're testifying. Tonight, what it does, amen, it proclaims what God has brought you through, what God has helped you to get through. And when you stand and when you testify the goodness and the mercies uh, and the grace of God that's been in your life, uh, it will encourage somebody else that's going through something very similar. Huh? It builds up our faith. It builds up our faith. Amen. Praise God. But nobody understands, Elijah. Amen. I'm going through this. I fought and I fought. I battled after battle. And it seems like there's no hope. There's no end to the fight. Have you ever felt that way? It's never going to end. I'm never going to get through this. I've been through it month after month after month. And I've gotten, gotten through, not gotten through it. But the Bible says, they that endure unto the end the same shall be saved. Paul said in 2 Timothy 4 and 7, he said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. And I have kept. What do you keep? Faith is the key to be a good soldier. Right? Faith is the key to being a good soldier. Right? Hey, listen. If you have faith in God, when you get on an airplane that you're going to make it to the other, other place where you're supposed to go, then guess what? God will come through for you. If you've got faith in God, God will see you through circumstances and situations and predicaments that you don't never see a way out. And God will perform a miracle if you'll have faith. Right? But see, we got to have faith, don't we? We got to trust God. We can't let our guard down as a good soldier. And sometimes, like I said, it's a lonely way. But our faith should never, ever, ever, ever waver. Ever. The heroes of faith. We ever, have you ever read that in Hebrews 11? Talks about different ones. Talks about Abel. Talks about Enoch. Talks about uh, uh, Noah and Abraham. Talks about these different heroes of the faith. Uh, different things that they went through. But guess what they did? Uh, they were faithful. Yeah. They were faithful to God regardless of the situation. I'm not telling you they were perfect. We're not perfect, church. We're not perfect. I'm not perfect. I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven. And you know what? From the day that he saved me, from the day that his blood was shed on Calvary for me, and the day that he applied it to my heart and to my life, and he wrote my name in the Lamb's Book of Life, Sister Linda, from that day forward, amen, he put a measure of faith in me. He put something down in my heart that says, I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to look back. I'm going to press my way forward. I can tell you this, and I'm not boasting this of myself at all. I'm going to boast on God because I know God's put it in my heart. I am not a quitter. I said, I am not a quitter. I am not one that gives up. I am not one, amen, that's willing to quit and give it all up. I have never, and I give glory to God, I've never, ever wanted to lay this thing down. I've been through some tough times. I've through, been through some battles, Sister Betty. I've been through some mental anguish in my life, but I want to tell you this, because of God. I just want to share my heart. Because of God, I've never wanted to lay this thing down, Pastor Myers. Never have I ever wanted to quit God. Never. It ain't because of me. 
I want you to know that tonight. You're looking at me like maybe I'm crazy, but I'm just going to tell you this. I've never wanted to quit this thing. I ain't never, I'm telling you, I've made mistakes. I've sinned and I've come short of the glory of God just like anybody else. But I want you to know this. I didn't ever want to quit. I'm not going to quit. I'm going to fight. Good soldier fights. <laughs> Pick up thy sword, saith the Lord. March into the battle. For I am behind thee, saith God. I shall show thee that I am strong and mighty. And I shall do great exploits through you, saith the Lord. If you shall trust in me. Cast all down aside, saith the Lord, for I am a God that is able. Can you not look unto me and see that I have been faithful in the past? And I shall show thee this time that I will again be faithful unto thy household, saith the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Stand with me, church. Hallelujah. God is faithful. God has never let you down. He's never, ever failed us. If we're going to be a good soldier, church, we got to fight the good fight of faith. We got to be faithful. That's full of faith. Trust God. I'm telling you, He's going to help you through it. We're not heroes. <laughs> but we just held on. <laughs> I want to be one that just holds on. Holding on to the very end. I just held on. Come on, Rebecca. Come on, church. Get around these altars tonight. <laughs> Laying hold on eternal life tonight, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, I do 